First, I'd like to begin by gratefully acknowledging the source of the histomicrographs I will be using in this video and in future videos. The website is Digital Histology, and the website is under the auspices of Virginia Commonwealth University. I provide the link to the website in the description below. Here is the official attribution and Creative Commons license. Mitosis is part of the cell cycle, which is basically the alternation of growth and or function with cell division. Here the cell cycle is schematically represented with the phases shown by arrows. No matter how fast or frequent this cycle, mitosis is the shortest part of the cycle. The term mitosis comes from a Greek word mitos, which means thread. This reflects the fact that during mitosis, the chromosomes become visible and thread-like. The remainder of the cell cycle is taken up by the phase between mitoses. This in-between phase is called interphase. Interphase cannot be divided into histologically distinct phases. In other words, something that you can see or that can be seen. However, the activity in the cell between mitoses can be divided into functional phases. First, we have the G1 phase, which you can interpret as the first growth phase. After cell division, the cell needs to grow before its next division. Otherwise, it would just get smaller with each division. The next phase is the S phase. This is the phase of synthesis. The chromosomes are duplicated during this phase. Finally, before mitosis, there is a second shorter growth phase in preparation for mitosis. The easiest way to observe mitosis is to find tissue where cells are undergoing rapid cell division. The whitefish blastula, which is an early embryonic stage of the organism, is commonly used in biology courses. This panel of histomicrographs represents the excellent quality of the images found in digital histology. But now I want to step aside for a second to give biology students some practical advice. Practical advice is a bit of a pun because most of the people who view my videos are students who are preparing for a practical exam. A practical exam is a type of exam where you demonstrate how well you can transfer conceptual knowledge to practical material, including models, preserved organic material, and microscope slides. When I was teaching, I always told students that it was important to look at as many different slides as they could. The reason for this is that in a box of 30 or so slides on the same tissue, like the whitefish blastula, only six at the most would be useful. The rest of the slides would be kind of crappy. The reason for this is that quality assurance of the slides that were manufactured left a lot to be desired. So in short, if your slide doesn't look like the ones I'm going to show, try looking at another one and as many as you can. I'll stop now and you can skip over this segment of preaching in the future if you wish. So here is a panel of excellent images, but notice even with these excellent slides, there is considerable variation in the staining. Again, different slides have different looks, so get familiar with the variation. We begin with a panel of images that show interphase. The process of making histological slides always involves some degree of distortion, like shrinkage, for example. In the cell in the middle, we see evidence of this shrinkage if we outline the nuclear envelope of the nucleus. Also notice that the cell membrane is irregular in outline, again reflecting shrinkage. If we look closer at the material in the nucleus, 
and the cytoplasm of the cell notice the coagulation of the macromolecules, even to the extent that you see a gap between the cell membrane and what were the contents of the cytoplasm. Again, this is distortion. These distortions are also referred to as artifacts. With all this unavoidable distortion, the cell and interphase has a nucleus with a clearly delineated nuclear envelope. The material within the nucleus appears granular. The granularity of this material reflects the fact that the chromosomes are unwound or uncondensed, so that the nuclear material is clumped in this fine granular pattern. The chromosomal material in this form in the nucleus is called chromatin. In mitosis, the equal division of the duplicated chromosomes can be divided into four phases. The first phase is called prophase. The prefix pro implies this because it means first or foremost. This panel shows prophase from the earlier to the later stages. The earlier stages are on the left. Notice that the nuclear envelope is beginning to disintegrate and disappear. And the chromatin has condensed as the chromosomes become more tightly wound upon themselves. The nuclear envelope is practically gone in this cell and the chromosomal threads are further condensed and are picking up more of the blue hematoxylin stain. In this cell, there is definitely an absence of a nuclear envelope, and the thread-like nature of the chromosomes is apparent. The cell no longer has its chromosomes in the form of chromatin. The first phase is imperceptibly followed by the phase that comes after or beyond. The prefix meta means after or beyond. This phase is metaphase. On the left again, there is an earlier stage of metaphase. Now the threads are clearly visible. Also apparent in this cell are the locations of the centrosomes or centrioles, which are also called the microtubule organizing centers. The microtubules radiate outward from these centers like the rays of a star. And for this reason, they are also called astral fibers. The condensed duplicated chromosomes remain attached to each other at a protein structure called a centromere. Each duplicated chromosome is called a chromatid when they are attached to each other in this way. Attached to the centromere, there is another protein structure called a kinetochore. Some of the microtubules that extend in the direction of these paired chromatids will attach to the kinetochores, which now act as a kind of handle on the chromatids. These microtubules are called kinetochore fibers or microtubules. This is a cell at a later stage of metaphase. Note that the chromosomes are diametrically opposed and the fibers extending from each form an ellipsoid shape in between as they extend to the chromatids. This configuration of fibers is called the spindle apparatus. At this point, the attached chromatids have moved to the center of the cell and are arranged like a disc or flat plate. This is called the metaphase plate and is characteristic of metaphase. Because it occupies the wide center of the spindle apparatus, it is also called the equatorial plate. The next phase is anaphase. The prefix ana means apart, as in anatomy, which means to cut apart. During this phase, the chromatids separate and move to opposite poles. When the chromatids separate, they are now chromosomes. 
Here is an early stage of this separation. Notice that there is now a space between the duplicated sets of chromosomes. The spindle apparatus now has a definite spindle shape, like the shape of an American football. Within this spindle, there are kinetic core microtubules or fibers. These fibers are pulling the chromosomes of each duplicated set to either pole. There are also non-kinetic core microtubules. These microtubules, as their name implies, go past the chromosomes and interact with the fibers from the other side in a manner that pushes the chromosomes apart. Here is a later stage of anaphase. And here is yet a later stage. The chromosomes are closer to their respective destinations and the microtubules of the spindle apparatus are visible in the space in between. The final phase, the end phase, is telophase or telophase. Telophase is a prefix which means end. The chromosomes of either cell have arrived at their respective poles and are concentrated near the centrosomes. Another separate process is now evident. If mitosis is going to result in two new cells, the cytoplasm has to be divided. This process is called cytokinesis. Cyto means cell and kinesis implies movement. This process begins during anaphase when the cell membrane around the center of the cell constricts. Here, this constriction is evidenced by the cell membrane that has appeared to divide the center of the spindle. Here is another nice example of the spindle fibers appearing to cross the cell membrane. Here the spindle fibers are no longer apparent, but the symmetric condensation of the chromosomes in the absence of a nuclear envelope clearly indicates telophase. During late telophase, the nuclear envelope reforms around the respective chromosomes. This brings my first histology video to an end. Again, this video would not be possible without the generosity of digital histology. I hope to produce more histology videos in the future. Please support me by subscribing and liking, and any kind comments that you have keep me going. Down below there is a link to the Digital Histology website where you can find more study material, including quizzes. There is also a link to a quiz that I made. And finally, because of the insistence of my daughter Marie, here is yet another cat video.